Good morning, gang. Happy Friday. The definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Somebody needs to remind this administration about that. <clears throat> you know, it's most people from being a little kid on learn something real early on in life. Sometimes it's just bet best to cut your losses because if you don't have the chance of winning and it's just going to cost you more and more and more, <clears throat> why continue? Except this administration and Bozo Joe still haven't learned that lesson that most of us learned when we were five or six. You look at what's going on here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, a week or so back, I told you about Mexico's President Obrador trying to extort the United States out of $20, $20 billion a year that unless we give Latin American countries $20 billion every year, he's not going to stop the flow of illegals coming across the southern border. Yesterday, you had David Cameron, okay, the British Foreign Secretary, come out and say, in regards to the war in Ukraine, if we can get that money out of the U.S. Congress, if we can get the uh, Ukraine the arms that they need, if we can show Putin that he can't outweigh us and that Ukraine is going to fight back and win more of its territory, Okay, please explain to me when foreign leaders somehow dictate U.S. economic policy and how we spend our money. Cameron wasn't talking about the U.K. sending more money. No, he said, no boots on the ground. We're not doing anything else. We need to get the Americans to do it. No. Okay, sorry, we don't need more wars. We don't need to see more kids die. You know, we've had our fair share of losses recently. We got out of Korea, didn't win the war, obviously, as you can tell, we have a North and South Korea, uh, because it just wasn't feasible. Certainly didn't win in Vietnam. We cut our losses there. We certainly didn't win the war on terror, or whatever you want to call the Afghanistan war was. Okay, I wouldn't exactly call Iraq a raving success. Gee, we got rid of Saddam Hussein. Big deal. The devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Okay. But Joe was bound and determined to be a wartime president. He wants war. He thinks that's how he's going to earn his second term because, you know, us Americans, we're so bloodthirsty. You know, this is all we want. We want to go to war. We like sending our kids off to die. Nope. Okay. You look at what happened yesterday. Tony Blinken, the uh, Secretary of State, Love how he comes up with this. His quote, Ukraine will become a member of NATO. Really, that might piss off Russia a little bit. Okay. Because one of the big things that Russia has said, and the United States agreed to years ago, was that NATO would not expand eastward and be on Russia's border. Now, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, I get it, okay? But for the last two years, we've heard that Russia has no, refuses to let Ukraine become part of NATO. And now our Secretary of State is saying that's going to happen. You want to start World War III? Go ahead, Joe. Do that. Oh, wait, you do want to start World War III. I forgot about that part. Okay. 
let's go over to what's going on in the Middle East. Okay, another war that we have no business being in. Uh, you may know that within the last couple of days, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Syria, okay, amongst many other things, okay. And <clears throat> now Iran is threatening to strike back to the point that the CIA has warned Israel to expect an attack from Iran in the next 48 hours. That was released yesterday afternoon. Okay. So yeah, we can expect that. Now, if they start bombing Israel, you can certainly bet that Israel is going to retaliate on Tehran. Yeah, uh, we're talking about one nuclear power, Israel, and one possible nuclear power. We don't know how far Iran has got in nuclear capabilities because, again, Joe completely messed that uh, arms treaty completely up, you know, going all the way back to Obama and the pellets full of cash. Then you have Joe come out yesterday and demand Israel ceasefire with Hamas. I don't understand this whatsoever, anywhere, where foreign countries can demand another country to do something. You know, Obrador demanding money from the United States, Cameron demanding money from the United States. The United States demand Israel stop their war with Hamas. Yeah, let's see how many times Israel has gone to the table and stopped the war with terrorists. Has it ever done any good? No, the terrorists just come back and do it all over again. Okay. Talking about all the aid that Hamas isn't going to work with Israel anymore to get foreign aid in. Bernie Sanders coming out and saying, no more aid to Israel. We need to send food to people in Gaza. No, we don't, okay? We don't need to do anything. This all comes down to us as people, the citizens of the United States. Citizens, not illegals. The people, the people who actually pay the taxes in this country. The people who actually fund the idiots that are in Washington. Both sides, okay? Because both sides are idiotic in this. Wanting war in Ukraine. Wanting war in Israel. I don't want war anywhere. Okay, War ain't pretty. Ask anybody that's been there. Okay, It's not fun. You know. There's no joy. Standing at an airport. Waiting for a plane to unload the casket of your kids. With a flag draped over a coffin. There's no joy, there's no fun in sitting at Thanksgiving dinner with an empty table there, or empty seat there, because mom or dad isn't around anymore. There isn't any fun in that, okay? And what do these people die for? Nothing, okay? Joe can't remember Lake and Riley's name. Do you think Joe actually remembers any soldier that's died? You know, their name? Ask Joe the name of any of the People that got killed on the tarmac in Afghanistan a few years ago. I guarantee you he can't name a single one of them. Okay? He doesn't care. They do not care about you. We shouldn't care about them. Okay? Their decisions need to stop. They do not represent the people's wishes. You see all these people on the internet you know, with their little blue and yellow icons next to their uh, name or whatever on Twitter, or YouTube, whatever it is. Stop Russia, support Ukraine, yada, 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 whatever, okay? You want, let me see how many of those people are willing to strap up and go fight for Ukraine. I can guarantee you the percentage 
it's a big fat round zero. Okay, none of them would be willing to. They're all willing to, you know. I'll so on my social justice, you know. I'll do all that crap, but you know, put your money where your mouth is. Nope, sorry. Oh, we have soldiers gonna do that. No, we don't. Okay. Our military is to defend the country. That is why years and years and years ago, the Department of War was changed. Its name was changed to the Department of Defense. Okay, not the Department of Offense, the Department of Defense. That means defending us, not, oh, we have to go defend Ukraine. We have to go defend Israel. No, they can do it completely by themselves. And you know what? To the victor goes the spoils. If they don't, if they don't want to cut their losses because it's an unwinnable war, then let them do it themselves. We have no obligation to Ukraine at all. We do have an obligation to support Israel. We have no obligation whatsoever to support Hamas, and by no means ever should we support a Palestinian state or Hamas or anything my opinion okay disagree with me if you want i don't care you're not going to change my mind i'm not going to change yours i'm going to tell you my opinion but we as a country our kids our money do not need to be going over there because when all this stuff escalates like they're trying to do gee what are the chances of Russia using strategic nuclear weapons in Ukraine if we go to World War III or on anywhere else in Europe? Probably pretty good. What are the chances of Israel and Iran using strategic nuclear weapons against each other? Probably pretty good. What are the chances of your kids getting sent to fight in one of those wars? Probably pretty good. What are the chances of domestic terrorism happening on the U on U.S. soil? Probably guaranteed, okay? We already have the Israeli embassies around the country and around the world, okay, on the highest alert possible. What do you think is going to happen when all of a sudden we have... <clears throat> some sort of terrorist attack happen in New York City, which has a large Jewish population, or in Detroit, which has a large Jewish population, or in a synagogue anywhere, on a politician somewhere, on a business owner, somebody owns a bagel shop somewhere, and all of a sudden it's firebombed, or some radical goes in there, with an AK and start shooting up the place. What's going to happen then? Okay. This is this is what we are being led to. This is what you have to be ready for to happen in your area. Sure, some of us can say there's no real Jewish population around me. There's no real Arabic population around me. There's no real Russian, Ukrainian population around me. Great, maybe you're not as high, at high of risk. <clears throat> but if there's a mailbox around you and you've got kids or grandkids, you're just as much at risk to having kids in a line of fire as anybody else because of these warmongers we have running the country right now who have no desire to protect you they just want power and they figure if we're at war the people will be afraid to change leadership again i'll remind you how many wars we got into between 2017 and 2020 under the last president that would be another big fat round zero that would be the way we should be. America first, not Ukraine first, not Israel first, 
not Palestine first, not Mexico first, America first. That's one of the big things that's on the ballot in November that affect all of us. What's more important to you? The fact that you can eat tomorrow or the fact that somebody half a world away can eat tomorrow? It's not my responsibility to feed the world. I'll take, a, I'll take care of Americans any day of the week. The rest of the world, no, sorry, doesn't fly in my book. Each one of us makes our own way in life. You got to stop giving people handouts. They have to earn it. They have to fight for what they have, just like we all have to fight for what we have. Unfortunately, for the last three and a half years, Americans have had to fight their own government to get what we have. 